Thank you. Thanks, Mitchell. It's been really great to develop this partnership with HashiCorp um, and see the benefits that the combined forces of Hashi and uh, Azure can bring to, to our joint customers. Because the truth is that when you're building applications in the real world, it's a really complicated hybrid environment. You need the ability to interact with both existing services that may be running on VM-based infrastructure, with newer microservices that might be running in Kubernetes in the Azure Kubernetes service. You need to be able to have all of this stuff work on-premise as well as in the cloud across a wide variety of environments. So most applications that we see out there aren't the pretty diagrams that you see in the cloud-native application uh, portfolio, but rather a complex collection of pipes going in different directions. Um, and the combination of Azure's technology and console can make a really great uh, way to bring those applications together. To, to give a demonstration of this, I'm going to go through our legacy application that we're uh, using console and Azure to help modernize, uh, and that is Cloud Pong. So Cloud Pong has been a, a successful legacy application. Well, it started out as a new application, but it became a legacy application based on virtual machines, hard-coded IP addresses between the different players. Pretty happy with it, but our agility isn't just where it needs to be. And so we're going to microservicify that thing. Um, we've gotten, if you've seen the recent uh, Dilbert cartoon, we had the pointy-haired boss come in and say Kubernetes to us. So we're Kubernetesifying our service. Um, but as we do that, the question becomes, we've got these services over here. Kubernetes is cloud native, and that's wonderful. But we still have this VM based for our second player, and we have to do this migration successfully. How can we make sure that we bridge the world of dynamic services and Kubernetes with a more legacy world uh, of virtual machines? Uh, and it turns out that to do that, console is a great solution. Right? So console is, is a, something that we see with our customers a lot, specifically around this notion of bridging from a mesh that's in Kubernetes and a mesh that is, is in other environments. But the question is, how do I drive this? How do I make this work in a, in a Kubernetes-centric way? And how do I ensure that, you know, if I want to use other service mesh implementations, because at this point, every couple weeks, there's a new service mesh being announced, um, how do I make sure that it all works and that I'm learning and my tools can use the same thing? And so to do that, a while ago at KubeCon in Barcelona, we partnered with HashiCorp and others to come up with the service mesh interface specification. It's an open specification. It's out there on GitHub. And you can use this open specification to drive your service mesh so that you're not bound to any particular implementation. You can use console if that works great in the managed service on Azure. If you're in a different environment with a different implementation of service mesh, you can use the exact same Kubernetes objects to configure and set up your application. So to give an example of this in the real world, I've actually deployed exactly this architecture out onto Azure using console, using uh, the Azure Kubernetes service, using a legacy VM. Um, and I want to give a demo of this. So in order to do that, we're going to have a demo of Cloud Pong. But of course, you really can't play Pong without another player. So to do that, I understand we have a volunteer from the audience who's going to come up here, and we'll do a little Pong uh, on stage for you. So, this is the step to any successful startup. Grab our volunteer, something magic will happen, and hopefully we'll profit out the other side. So come on up. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's get this set up here. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Oh, uh, is my screen? Is my screen on there? I can't actually. Oh, my screen is there. Awesome, cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to set up my, uh, my game here. Many thanks, by the way, to the folks who helped me build this. Um, and over here, we're going to set up player two for you. Sorry, I'm going to type a little bit for you. But it looks like player two is not connecting. We're not actually seeing um, player two's, uh, you know, uh, the, the paddles or the ball on player two's screen. So she's going to be at disadvantage. I'm going to win. No, I'm kidding. Um, and it turns out the reason for this is because Console, as Mitchell mentioned, is secure by default. And if I go over to the console UI here, what you're going to see, if I hit refresh, oh, is that, oh, this is my, yeah. I'm just going to show you that this works, even though I didn't reset my demo. Does that mean I win? You win. No, so I'm going to show you how the SMI is able to control console. So what you see here is none of the intentions are there, which is not allowing um, the connections through from through console from player one to player two. We can actually use the service mesh interface here uh, to create those intentions. 
So if I actually take a look at the policy, these are Kubernetes objects. I can actually show you the policy. So these are actually Kubernetes objects that control the connections between uh, the services that are exposed in Kubernetes and the services that are exposed on the VM. If I go ahead and create those, that says delete. They're not there. Deleting doesn't work. I'm going to create the uh, create. See, live demo. Um, all right, so now we've actually created those. We'll go back over to console. We're going to hit refresh. And the intentions are there. So now if I go back to my Pong, all right, and we'll go back to your Pong, and we will try and reconnect and reconnect. And we are ready. All right, you ready? So it's arrow keys up and down. Okay. Space bar if you want to uh, hit the ball. Although I, it's my serve. So okay. all right, ready to go? Yep. All right, here we go. Thrilling, thrilling. We need a play-by-play. -play. I should have a play-by-play -play announcer. Is it not? <laughs> Hold it. Try holding it down. This is rigged. It's rigged? <laughs> no. Oh, you're, maybe is it is the men? <laughs> oh, see, there we go. All right. Well, where's your mouse? I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure your terminal's selected here. It's Max. All right. Let's see if the spacebar works. Spacebar. Space And scroll. I'm gonna, we'll try this again. I want to give you a fair shot at this, after Thank you. all. I yeah, that. I mean, really. All right, let's try it now. No. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to apologize. I don't think. Yeah, I really didn't intend for me to be the only one with controls that worked. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess that's the situation we find ourselves in. So you have to at least, you know. At least I can make my controls work. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. I really apologize. Great game. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to have Mitchell come back onto the stage and tell you more. Thanks. Thank you.